Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Pokemon Rising Ruby, but we are only using Borg type, also known as a Borg type mono type thingy from Jiwiki. Uh, good news, I actually uh, went into my settings and I now have my A and B buttons mapped correctly. And I also have an analog stick properly mapped, rather than just being buttons. It actually registers it as a proper analog stick, so I can sneak uh, right now, which is uh, actually kind of huge. So. Let's see, uh, we have Cup, Spoon and Matapot, which I haven't named yet because I'm an idiot! I forgot, uh, so I might actually wait for... I, I don't know that anybody... Oh! That could be interesting! That could be interesting, that, that's going to be interesting. I'm gonna catch this thing. I'm gonna catch this thing. Just because, number one, it's level 8, which is ridiculous, but also because it actually turns into a pretty useful Pokémon, I think, right? Scolliopede usually is pretty good. I'm assuming it has been turned into something at least slightly better than it used to be, because it's a Bog-type, and Bog-types always get fucked. So, presumably it is, uh, it is getting a bit of a boost in Rising Ruby. So... I actually have a topic to talk about today. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be an interesting topic, but it's going to be a topic and I'm going to be talking about it. And as such, that's what this episode is going to be about. Because I've been uh, I've been busy today, uh, as you can not see uh, yet. At some point, the game will probably uh, give away the time of recording this because that's what this game loves to do. At least it's not Gen 5. Gen 5 just has a clock on the bottom screen at literally all times. Uh, but it's about 8 o'clock at night. As I'm recording this, and I got that without any issue. Upside to only getting bug type Pokemon is that they're pretty much all ridiculously easy to catch, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's name this thing first, and then I'll get into the story for today. Um, has not been identified in Howen. That could very much be true. Uh, we're going to call this thing. Um, it's a very good question. It's known for roller. What what is one of them things called you use to like roll dough? Is, is it literally a roller? It's not a roller, right? Um, roller kitchen. Does it have a proper name? <laughs> is the question. Um, kitchen roller is is literally what this says. Amazon. Um, a pin roller machine. Well, a pin roller. Uh, you also have machines for it, apparently. Um, are we going to call you a roller? We are. Because I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You are now roller. Uh, with double L. I think. You're roller with double L now. Let me check, let me check. I, I don't want to be an idiot. Um, it's rolling with double L. Uh, yeah, so roller. You are roller, part of the team now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, what do you guys think about my, uh... My overlay things. I, I finally decided, I've added to the first two episodes, I've decided what it's going to look like. The animation's in and out, and I'm actually kind of, I'm fairly happy with it. The first episode has gone up as of right now, and nobody's really commented on either the background animation that I added, uh, which I didn't make, it's just like stock footage, but that, let's keep that between you and me. That's, uh, that's the upside to having a subscription to stock footage uh, libraries, because I need that for my work. So I can use it for this too. And uh, the animation, uh, I, I think it makes things look at least a bit better, right? At, at least a little bit better. So um, do let me know what you think about that. If you haven't already, uh, episode two, you might let me know, but I very much doubt it if you didn't episode one. This could potentially be a problematic thing for me, but I have Metapod with a electric type food, which is going to annihilate the Wingle. Where is my water bottle? There is my water bottle. So. It's about 8 o'clock as I'm recording this, which is a bit later than I usually record, because usually I record a little bit more during the daytime, but I've been busy with work today. I had a um, nice sip of water. I had an animation video to finish, and then I needed to gather footage uh, for some other edits later this week. And the footage, I mean, are mostly pictures, but you know what? It doesn't matter that much. Uh, let's heal up against a wild Pokemon. Yeah, against a wild Pokemon. It's sympathetic. Yeah, but... Tiny bit. 
Uh, so that took a little bit, and then I had to do uh, some effects. And I did the effects. Uh, for reference, I, I needed to make some uh, some fireworks. Uh, but not just like a fireworks explosion, but in a specific shape. But it's really difficult to make fireworks in a specific shape. I don't know how they do it, like actual like pyrotechnics, how it's done. Because trying to do it in, in visual effects, it, it drove me fucking crazy. Because there is a really fine line. And I just realized how to do it, I think. Um, but there is a really fine line between... You want the, like, the... The little ambus, the, the little fires, right? To, to explode out, because that's what fireworks do. But you also um, want them to stay, like, in shape and, like... Because you want to be able to see what it is. And I needed to do, uh, like, a, a phrase in, in this case. So, in that situation, it's even more important that it's the letters are readable. You have to be able to read the phrase. So what I just realized is uh, the way to do the exploding out part is just like how I would do that. Uh, it's just by scaling it the fuck up from 0 to 100. But anyway, <laughs> I've been... Struggling with this for hours today. And at some point I was like, okay, I've got something. It doesn't really look like fireworks, but I just put some fireworks behind it. Then put a title with that animation on top of it, and maybe it'll be good enough. Spoiler, it wasn't good enough. The client didn't very much like it. So then I went uh, ahead and looked into different alternatives on Google, because I, I had no idea what to do on this point. And I found a, um, for anybody that's ever like worked in game development, in 3D uh, like animation, in 2D animation for that matter, uh, you'll be familiar with particles. And what particles are, it, it, it's just like, it, it's, I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it. It's literally just like having uh, tiny little images or objects if you're doing it in 3D. Uh, just like spewing out of a either a single point or like a line of points or, or whatever. Uh, you can do it, it can emit from pretty much everything, but it's just like you telling, okay, I want this image and just like randomly spew it out of it. And then you have a lot of control over like what direction, what speed, uh, how much gravity. It's, uh, it's kind of like a physics simulation as well in that regard. Um, and Adobe After Effects has some of that built in. But what also turns out is that Adobe After Effects, is it a wild battle? I think this is a wild battle. Do I want a Vanamoth? I don't think I necessarily want a Vanamoth. Though I'm still holding out hope that I'm running into something that's going to be Psychic type eventually. Uh, though I don't think Vanamoth would be. So yeah, Adobe After Effects has two different particle systems built into the software. They're called um, Particle Systems, wow, original, and Particle World, which is the more up-to-date and a little bit of easier version to work with as well. Both of them suck, like real bad. So I, um, I googled to alternatives, and I found one that's really good, and I actually used to use that uh, back in the day when I, uh, I didn't do this professionally, so I, I didn't give a crap about pirating stuff, so I pirated it. Uh, back in the day, can't do that anymore. And I, uh, I downloaded a trial. I, I played around with it a little, and it's so much fucking better. I made something that's actually decent looking. I, I sent it to the client, and I, I don't know what they're going to be thinking about it because I haven't gotten a uh, response from them yet. I'm terrified. Uh, let's see. We probably want Matterport to evolve as soon as we can, just to see if we need both Butterfree and Dust Ox on the team. I don't think that we do potentially. Uh, so then I looked up, because it was a trial, and as it was a trial, it has a watermark. So in case I need to actually like buy this, it, I'll probably end up using it quite a lot in the future as well. So it wouldn't be for just this one job. Um, but I kind of forgot that it's like a professional grade piece of software. It's not even a piece of software, it's just a plugin for After Effects. Which uh, I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, how much do you think that costs? Because um, the software itself, like that one plugin by itself, was $400. 
which sounds ridiculous, but it's like, it, it's ridiculous. It, it is almost a software in and of itself. It even has like a separate window in which you can um, do all of the settings and stuff, and then it, it imports that into After Effects. It, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. But that's a lot of money. And it's actually part of a, uh, a bigger, uh, a bigger suite of, of things, all surrounding like uh, physics simulations, fluid simulations, um, things like uh, 3D, because After Effects has some very basic 3D capability, but it's like real not good for it. So um, let's go into cup. This isn't going very well for me. Uh, I, I noticed. Some. Also, this isn't a uh, wild battle, so I couldn't have caught that Venonite, even if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, if you want the entire package, which is like, I think, 11 or 12 different plugins, uh, it's $1,000, which is only just about twice as expensive. So at that point, if you're getting that one thing, you, you might as well get the whole suite, right? Uh, which is kind of like their idea. I am sure. Uh, struggle bar, that's not a bad move, right? That, that's a pretty good move. It's... Battle of Sweet, Sam, for sure. Uh, they also have a subscription service, which is 88 euros, so probably like $90. How many Pokemon do you have? Let's say, okay, so let's say $90 um, a month. Or if you pay annually, it goes down to like sixty dollars. So, um, which would then like sixty times twelve would be six, seven, twenty. At that point, like after a year and a half, you'd be better off just buying the one thousand dollar version, which isn't that much, all things considered. Uh, it might be the case though that. The the one-time buying version is an older version. I didn't really look into that because I don't plan to buy it uh, unless absolutely necessary uh, for right now. Because while I say I would probably... I did not want to stay in there. Um, while I say I probably will end up using it more in the future. Um, I'm broke. <laughs> so I don't really have that much. Well, let me rephrase. I theoretically do have that money, but if I were to spend that, I would literally have no money left. Uh, for So I, I can't really do that, so that's not really a fiscally responsible thing to do. Uh, so I'm probably not going to end up doing that. If the client likes what I uh, what I have produced with this, I'll probably just end up getting a subscription for one month and then cancelling it after that month. Because that, that would be cheaper. Though, so I think that would also be a bad idea. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I, I've kind of like put myself in a difficult situation there. We finally get a Psychic Zap move. Let's go back to Pokemon. I've been talking about my work for like 15 fucking minutes and you guys probably don't give a shit, but I just need a place around about how fucking expensive everything is. And um, people, we actually made it through without Black Knight, which is amazing to me, but we do need to go back We need to go back. We need to go back to the Pokemon Center. There's, there's no way we can do anything without going back to the Pokemon Center. So uh, that's my little story for today, is uh, everything is expensive and life sucks. And there's a spritzy in the grass here. So if ever you're in a situation where you like have a video editor or whatever, um, working on something and you're like, Damn, these people be expensive. That's because the things we need to pay also are expensive. <laughs> that cost just trickles down to the like final consumer at the end of the day, right? Because if you... And it's not even like... Okay. Example time. And I'm going to keep it in, like within the filming industry because I have actual examples here. But this, this is just how economics works in general. Well, you have a, a company like Red. I think by this point, uh, even people outside of like the film industry are fairly familiar with Red cameras because a lot of YouTubers, for no real reason, by the way, use them. Uh, and they're very expensive. Like, 
ludicrously expensive. Like, more expensive than any YouTuber has any, like, right to buy for camera. Because you upload into goddamn YouTube. They compress the shit out of it anyway. Why do you need such high-end camera? It bothers me a lot that people are dropping, like, a hundred grand on these cameras. While the final product doesn't benefit, I don't want to say at all, but close to not at all. Uh, <laughs> so... Well, as I said, those cameras can range from like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. So then, the people using those cameras, usually for um, for either Hollywood productions or a lot of commercial production, and that's kind of where I'm going with this, right? Um, people using those cameras in a commercial production, then like they just put it on the invoice because they're like, okay, we we like rented this thing or it's a hundred thousand dollars it's like it's a little like a thousand a day to rent uh, in most places so you put that on the invoice and uh, suddenly then like company x which is trying to make a commercial is paying a thousand dollars a day for this camera on top of all like the other lighting and the crew and the uh the actors and stuff like that which then they have, if you like film for a week, two weeks for a commercial, right? That adds up to like over $10,000, which they then got to make back on the product they are selling and they're advertising for. So at the end of the day, it's the consumer that is, is paying for all that bullshit because Red wants to make expensive cameras. So even if you're not in the film industry, they, they're making your stuff more expensive, even if just by a couple of cents. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's not like if they slice the slice the price of their cameras in half, your groceries are going to be significantly cheap. That, that's not going to happen. But in theory, they are partly responsible for that. <laughs> and these are the kind of things I like to think about. Um, I need help. But my brain does not stop. My brain just keeps going and things like this. And that was the easiest evil to... You are easier to be than like a six-year-old bug catcher. And you're supposed to be a threat to me. Makes no sense. Okay, so at this point, nobody's left. Because nobody cares about my experience show. Thank you. Is it a key item? It's a key item. That's going to help for grinding. I'm not going to turn it on too much on screen, I don't think. But it's going to help for grinding purposes. So uh, I got my experience. Talk. I didn't really need that, is the thing. So, what does our team look like at this point in time? We probably want to start leading with Manaport, which might not get a name. Again, it depends on what Butterfree's typing is and if it has been changed. I did skip one trainer there, but let's, let's do one wild encounter, because I don't think I've... I, I think I've done one wild encounter here, and it's Pample. I'm going to go ahead and assume that Cinepool and Sample? No, 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 it's, it's, it's not, yeah, it's Pansia, Panpool and Pan something else. And then the evolutions are semi. So, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> that's real not good. Bye bye Matterport. So you can get a monkey seed, which is useless to me, because none of them are bugged. Oh, that's the last time I had a deal. I guess it's decent grinding. It's dangerous, though. Certainly dangerous. I need something better than bubble. I don't know when I'll get something better than bubble. But even a star super effective bubble against something that's one level lower than me only did about half. And now in my luck, it's not going to two shot. It too short. Of course. When I'm trying to be dramatic, the game doesn't lap me. When I'm trying to actually win, the game fucks me. Make up your mind. You can either help me or hate me. There's a working all the way up there. I want to know what it is at the very least. Come on. Tell me what you want. I actually like this. 
is part of the game. Oh, you are... You stepped on my Pokemon! I was thinking... <laughs> are you a bulk type? You're not, you're brought and goes, but... <laughs> I guess you're double carries now because he steps on you! The fuck was that? <laughs> That's not okay! You can't do that! You can't just step on a Pokemon! <laughs> what? Let them tell you around about like. Expensive plugins and expensive cameras and economics and that's entirely not what you're here for. That all was worth it for that one moment in this episode, I want to say. So we, we've reached peak, the peak of this episode. We've re, we've reached peak performance as far as uh, entertainment goes. So that's going to be the end of this episode. Of course not. We're going to make it to Ross Brown this episode. At least I'm going to try. Um, at the pace we're going at the moment, uh, we're apparently already 20 minutes in. I don't know what happened to time, because I feel like this episode is only 10 minutes long so far, but my recording don't lie, and it's saying 21 and a half minutes in so far. So, I guess we need to hurry up, because so far we've only done Pedalburg Woods, and we need to actually go back through Pedalburg Woods, because our Metapod died. Funny thing is, we're probably going to end up boxing uh, Metapod anyway once it evolves into a Butterfree. Unless it turns into a Psychic type! Which it probably doesn't. But uh, if it doesn't turn into a Psychic type... Um, I'm getting texts. I, I don't know if you can hear those. I don't think you can. Um... Yeah, if it doesn't turn into a Psychic type, I and it's the same typing, it would be a Flame type, then, wouldn't it? So it would be a different typing. It would be, but I probably can't learn Fly. Oh, I probably can't get anything that can learn Fly, right? Is there any box that can learn Fly? I'm not entirely sure. So where is it? Surely it's somewhere around here. Swirlix, I don't care. <laughs> I was spotted. Um, yeah, I spotted what it was, and I didn't give a crap. That's what happened. I didn't fuck up, if that's what you're thinking. Paralysis heal. Hmm. That seems... unnecessary. I don't think I've run into a single thing that can paralyze me in here. At least in Pokemon Red and Blue. I'm not saying those are the best Pokemon games out there, because they're very much not. Uh, but at least in Red and Blue and Radiant Forest, you've got uh, Poison Heals, and it's, it's not a Punkaboo. I I do not care. I will never care. And hello, Penpool. This time, actually, we're still going to be fighting you. Because you'll have a mine, and I have an electric tap move. And you can still two-shot me, with a bit of luck on your part. I am sorry! That is pathetic in so many ways. I know Metapod is not supposed to be offensively capable. That's kind of its point. It's just defensive until it evolves, which it will at a very early level, and then it actually becomes somewhat useful. But until then, it is, uh, it's kind of like a, a bit of a piece of shit, not gonna lie. Didn't even level up. Oh, the AXP shit is turned on. Uh, let's turn that up. Holy hell, okay, so that is my, uh, that, that, that is my TikTok. Uh, not my TikTok, it's just TikTok. I, I was watching TikToks before recording this. Everything is going to hell. <laughs> let's turn this off. Because we don't need... Well, we might need more experience. Let's be honest, we, we we probably could do with some more experience. And then, oh yeah, there's this added cutscene in uh, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and of course, as such, also in Rising Ruby and Sinking Sapphire. And we've got that Team Magma actually had a bit of like a I don't want to call it a backstory because that 
would be giving it a bit too much credit, maybe. But uh, there, there are some things going on. Let's get these Auron Barracks, because that might actually do something more like decent for, for Metapod. Because I, I do need to heal him up. And I might as well give him, like, I can give him a potion. But I can also just feed him an Auron Berry, almost be a fool. No! I wanted to give him that as a hold item. I guess we have uh, cherry and patcha berries as well, in case we get paralyzed and poisoned. At least this looks like patcha berries, right? Yeah, so it's three patcha berries. Uh, yeah, so it turns out we uh, do not actually get orange berries, unless there's citrus berries and there's not even another bush over here. I don't know why I thought there was another bush over there. Let's try to sneak past as many of these guys as we can. There's going to be a mandatory uh, double battle up here, which... Hmm. We only have one good Pokemon, really? Which is Spoon? Copy is not bad in levels, but have you ever seriously thought that Surskid, even at level 100, would be able to do anything? Answer is no. Uh, upside, both these Pokemon are in fact grass types, so that'll help me out. The boat level 10. Um... I'm going to try to bug bite the seal and see what happens. And then we poison sting. I don't have a blood type move. Uh, poison sting the Lotad. We do outspeed everything on the. Ah, uh, we poison the Lotad. Okay, that is actually huge. That's a real good reason to keep Rota in. Just the off chance that I can poison something. And it doesn't seem like Lotad can do that much damage either. C dot's defense row. So we're definitely going to want to poison the C dot as well, if at all possible. Let's try to gang up on the C dot. Because it's also raising its defense, which is something that I'm 100% not about. And I poisoned it again! What are the odds of Poison Sting actually poisoning? I gotta look this up. Um, poison Sting. Uh, sting. I don't know if Dreano changed the percentage chance for that. I'm assuming not. 20% in Generation 1 and 30% in Generation 2 on board. So it's actually... Well, having that back-to-back, -back, that's a pretty low chance. That's one-third times one-third, so that's one in nine. So that's like... 11 point then some percent. Which isn't actually that unlikely. Yeah, it's actually not that unlikely. Now I think about it. So, we'll see the die from a bug by and a poison. I think C dot will die, and if not, C dot will die now. <laughs> that could be bad. I don't know if that's the first or second turn of bide. I didn't pay it, uh, attention, so that could be problematic. That certainly could be problematic. Yeah, and C dot's gonna die from from poison, surely. Please. I don't know if poison, it's not going to matter because see what is that. But does poison actually influence the damage like calculation from body? Or does it only count the actual damage a Pokemon does against another Pokemon? Does, does things like burn or poison affect it? I'm going to assume that it doesn't affect it, but it might. I, I really do not know. And frankly, at this point, I don't much care. So, Rotor is also going to be a fairly late evolution, I think. But it's going to be probably on the team for quite a while, if not through the entire thing, honestly, because that's significantly more damage than I expected from a bug bite out of Metapod. Uh, Luchi, we might want to switch out Metapod at this point, because all the Pokémon that exist in this battle will have been sent out at this point. So Metapod really doesn't have anything to gain from staying in. And at this point, we might as well just clean up with Spoon. We're going to 30 minutes into this episode, and I would very much like to end off this episode as we 
That's all right, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be a long episode. I spent the first little bit... It's a bit of a longer episode because I, I spent the first, like, 15 minutes of it talking about my own personal baggage. So you guys are getting a little bit extra here. Mostly because this battle is going very, very slowly. That's one thing I'll say about Gen 6, and I think mostly every generation since uh, going to 3D. The battles do feel a lot slower as a result. Uh, because you have all these changing camera angles and all the animations seem to take longer. And like the, the signature move animations especially take fucking forever. Uh, if you look at what is um, the, uh, the legendary from Sword and Shield called? Not, not the dog, the other one. Eternatus. Uh, Pursuit might not be bad to have. Baladon's great, for sure. Uh, Eternatus. His... His signature move of Dynamax Cannon, it's... It's animation is ridiculously long. It, it's, it doesn't need to be that long. Every time you use it, it takes like three hours to complete. You can press the button to use the move, go make a cup of tea, come back, drink the cup of tea, and then go watch the entire Lord of, Lord of the Rings trilogy, and maybe by that time... The animation for the move will have finished. It's way too fucking long. And yeah, I might be a bit hyperbolic there. But, uh, not too much. I think it literally is like 11 and a half hours long for one animation. If you couldn't tell, it's not literally 11 and a half hours long, but it's like probably 20 seconds. And that is not exaggerated. I think it's literally like 20 seconds for a single move. Which is way too much in any scenario where you, like, it, it's a move. But you, not even like a thing that you do once per battle, like a Mega Evolution, which also took quite a while for the animations or uh, something like that. Right? Um, or the Z moves. They also took a little bit longer, but you can't spam those. This is just a signature move for a Pokemon. Something that you can use every single turn. There's no need for it to take that long. Matter of fact, it shouldn't take that long. It should not, never take that long for a normal move to come out. Even if it's a signature move for a very specific Pokemon, that is too long. I don't know if it's actually 20 seconds, but it feels, again, it feels like the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. Extended edition, by the way, not, not, not a theatrical cut. No, 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 no. We're talking director's cut here. Anyway, I think it's about time to end up this episode because I've been rambling for a while and we're 35 minutes in and it's... Uh, it's quite something. So, until next time when we're taking on the gym, I'm going to be a little bit higher level. We're going to have a evolved a Pokemon team with evolved Pokemon. My language, very good. I'm very good with words. I have the best words. Yes. I'll see you back next time. Bye.